Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, a spanning set is a set of all linear combinations of a subset of a vector space. Let us explain it by these figures. If we are given a vector space, which we represent by this black circle, and there is a subset S of this vector space. We represent the subset S by the blue circle. For simplicity, let us assume that in S there are only two elements, V1 and V2. Then a spanning set S is another set which contains all the linear combinations of the elements of S. So we can see that the first linear combination FC2 is zero, we can take C1, V1. FC1 is zero, we can take another linear combination C2, V2. If both are non-zeros, we can write C1, V1 plus C2, V2. So this set, which contains all the linear combinations of the elements of S, S is a subset of V, is called a spanning set. And we can see that C1 and C2, these are real numbers. So real numbers are infinite. So there will be infinite number of elements in the spanning set. Let us explain it mathematically. We say that V is a vector space and there are V1, V2, V3 and up to Vn. So there are to total N elements in V. We take another subset S, which is this one containing only two elements, V1 and V2. These are the elements of V because S is a subset of V. Then another set S, which contains all those elements, which are the linear combinations of the elements of V1 and V2. That set S is called a spanning set. In simple word, the spanning set is denoted by this symbol and it will contain elements C1 V1 plus C2 V2. But these are infinite number of elements because C1 and C2 are real numbers. We can put the value of C1 as 0, 1, 2, 3, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, minus 1, minus 2. Similarly, we can put the value of C2 equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2. So there are infinite numbers of elements in the spanning set S. Base is for a vector space. We say that a subset S of a vector space V is called basis for V if it satisfies two properties. The first property is elements of S will be linearly independent. Let us see what we mean by linearly independent. Let S is a set of these elements V1, V2 up to Vn if we put the linear combination of these elements equal to a zero vector and simplify this, and we get that all values of these constants are zeros. It means that this set is linearly independent. The second property is span of S will be equal to V or we can say that S spans V. It means that if we take any element from the vector space, that can be written as a linear combination of the elements of S. 
Now let us explain it by an example. In this example, we have a set B in which there are two elements. We show that this set B is a basis for a vector space equal to R square. The elements of R square are order pairs. To show that B is a basis for R square, we shall satisfy two properties. The first one is the elements of B will be linearly independent. So let us represent the first element by V1, the second by V2, and now we put the linear combination of these elements equal to zero. Use the value of V1 and V2. In this equation, we get that thing. Now multiply C1 inside here and C2 inside here. We get this and comparing, now add the first element with the first, second with the second and then compare both sides. This will be equal to zero and this thing will be equal to zero. So we get two equations. Now the task is to solve these two equations to get the value of C1 and C2. The first method is to add these two, C1 will cancel and we can get C2 equal to zero. Put C2 equal to zero in any of these equations, we get C1 equal to zero. But we shall use the method of matrices because it will be useful for other questions. To learn that method, we shall express these two equations in the form of augmented matrix. The augmented matrix is the coefficients of these things, one, two, zero the coefficient of this equation, minus one, four, zero. Now we shall reduce it to the echelon form. In echelon form, this element will be zero. So adding row number one with row number two, we get this. Now this element must be one. So divide row number two by six. Now this is in the echelon form. By backward substitution, we can get 0 C1 plus 1 C2 equal to 0, which gives C2 equal to 0. From this equation, 1 C1 plus 2 C2 equal to 0, but C2 is 0, so this gives C1 equal to 0. As both these constants, C1 and C2 are zeros, so it means V1 and V2 are linearly independent. In other words, this set B is linearly independent and the first property is satisfied. Let us see the second property in which we will show that S spans V. So we shall take any element from V, V is R square. So in any arbitrary element of R square is A comma B then we put that element equal to the linear combination of the elements of B. Now using the value of V, V1, V2, multiply C1 here, C2 in this one, is a similar procedure. We can get C1 plus two C2 equal to A, minus C1 plus four C2 equal to B. Now we shall solve this system of two equations to get the value of C1 and C2. If we get the value of C1 and C2 in terms of A and B, we can put the value of C1 and C2 here. And it means we can represent any element of R square as a linear combination of V1 and V2. So its augmented matrix is one, two, A. Then minus one, four, B. Reduce it to the echelon form. This will be zero. Add row number one with two. We get this thing. 
this must be one. So divide row number two by six. And now we can see this is in the echelon form. By backward substitution, we get C2 is equal to B plus A by six. From here, C1 plus two C2 is equal to A, but use the value of C2 here and simplify it. So we can get C1 is equal to two A minus B divided by three. Put these two values in equation number one and we get this equation. And you can see that AB is an arbitrary element of our square. So we can represent any element of our square as a linear combination of these two elements of B. Hence, span of B is equal to V, or we can say that B spans V. Second property is satisfied. As both properties are satisfied, we say B is a basis of our square. Now let us check that any element of our square can be represented as a linear combination of these two elements. So take any element from our square, just like I'm taking one comma zero, this is a member of our square. Students can take two comma three, four comma seven, 10 comma 100, or 1000 comma 10,000. So if you take any element, put the value of A and B in this equation on both sides and simplify this, we will get this thing. Now take the right hand side, multiply this inside here, this one here, then add the corresponding element. And after simplification, we get the left hand side. So 